Welcome to Mainline Health's Menopause and You Chat with a Physician. I'm Dr. Beverly Vaughn, a gynecologist at Lankano Medical Center. Today I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Stephanie Deloche. Dr. Deloche is a specialist in internal medicine who has had additional training in the treatment and care of renal disease. Today our topic is going to be hypertension. Thank you for being here, Dr. Deloche. Welcome. Dr. Vaughn, thank you for having me. I would like to start out for our audience talking about the definition of prehypertension and hypertension. Prehypertension is a category of blood pressure with a systolic blood pressure, so the top number between 120 and 139, and a diastolic blood pressure, or the bottom number between 80 and 89. Uh, we know that individuals with prehypertension, um, although they do not require specific therapy for blood pressure, are at risk for developing true hypertension, and so this creates an opportunity to uh, make lifestyle changes to reduce your risk for hypertension. Hypertension we define as a blood pressure above 140 over 90. Um, and these individuals often need a combination of lifestyle changes and medication to lower the blood pressure. And are women more likely to get hypertension than men? Is it an equal distribution? And does it change when women become menopausal? So certainly, we know that throughout life, so in early adulthood, men are more likely to have hypertension. Women's blood pressure tends to be lower than men um, in 20s and 30s. However, as women get older, and particularly as they approach and uh, go beyond menopause, blood pressure is elevated and their risk for hypertension matches and often exceeds that uh, of men. Other than age and possibly gender, what are the other risk factors for development of hypertension? So we like to look at risk factors for hypertension as kind of falling into one of two big categories. Uh, the first category are going to be modifiable factors, so things that the person can change. Um, so those factors would be uh, activity, so if you are more sedentary versus active, that increases your risk for hypertension. Um, Dietary factors, particularly salt, so individuals who eat more dietary salt are, have greater risk for hypertension. Uh, alcohol is another big factor, so for women, drinking more than one serving of alcohol per day increases your risk for hypertension. Obesity being another risk factor for hypertension. The more excess weight you carry, the more likely your blood pressure is to be high. Um, the other category of factors are going to be non-modifiable factors, so these are things that are part of a person's uh, genetic or biological makeup that they may not change, but do increase their risk. Uh, these are going to be things like age, as you had mentioned. So as we all get older, our risk for uh, hypertension increases. Uh, other things such as family history. So if you have a first degree relative, particularly one or two parents that have hypertension, you're more likely to develop it. Uh, and then other medical problems that you may have. So particularly diabetes and um, high cholesterol are associated with hypertension. Are there symptoms to hypertension? I know many people will say, but I feel fine. I can't possibly be ill or I can't possibly have hypertension. What kinds of symptoms might there be? That's one of the tricky things with hypertension, that often there are not any symptoms. Hypertension is commonly referred to as the silent killer because often by the time uh, patients will become aware of elevated blood pressure, uh, it may be at an extreme stage where there's a lot of damage to the heart or other vital organs of the body. Um, because there are no symptoms for hypertension, we recommend that patients who have risk factors for hypertension have their blood pressure checked routinely so that it may be treated before uh, damage to the body, um, particularly heart disease, develops. So screening is really the key. How often should somebody be screened? Let's say somebody doesn't have a medical problem like diabetes, but may have a brother or parent who has hypertension. How often should they be screened? So I would say depending on your risk factors, it's wise to be screened for hypertension at least on an annual basis. Uh, so for women as they advance in age, certainly at the time of menopause would 
uh, should have blood pressure checked at least on an annual basis but certainly if you have more than one risk factor so elevated body weight um, family history <clears throat> or um, eating excess salt or other factors you may want to check in with your doctor regarding blood pressure more than once a year if a person wanted to work towards preventing getting hypertension what kinds of things would you recommend to them good strategies to reduce your risk for hypertension um, are lifestyle measures so um, major things that people can do are to exercise routinely uh, we recommend that individuals engage in aerobic exercise for 30 minutes on most days of the week um, another big thing to do to reduce your risk for hypertension is to lose weight. So individuals who are overweight or have um, a BMI or a body mass index in the obese range want to partner with their doctor to um, adhere to a, a low fat diet to try to lose excess weight which can raise blood pressure. Um, additionally, there are dietary factors to change, so limiting um, excess salt. This can be tricky because many uh, foods in our uh, diet, and particularly in the United States, are prepared with salt. So in addition to not adding salt to meals, we recommend uh, trying to prepare as many meals at home with your own ingredients as opposed to eating in restaurants where they often add the salt to meals before it uh, arrives at your table. Um, and then finally, reducing alcohol intake. Uh, so again, for women, um, being sure not to exceed more than one alcoholic serving per day. So let's move to treatment options because we, we know that even with a lot of effort towards prevention, there are going to be individuals that are going to need medical therapy. How do you as a physician decide who needs therapy and how do you pick what medication to offer them? Patients who have elevated blood pressure, so numbers above 140 over 90 despite the lifestyle changes that we recommended, um, will be candidates for medical treatment. Um, the choice of medications for uh, treating blood pressure is fairly vast. There are literally hundreds of medications that we can choose from, and your doctor will choose one of those medications based on um, any other medical problems that you may have, um, and uh, to some degree, uh, personal preference on the part of the patient or the physician. Common classes of medications that we use to treat hypertension are going to be diuretics, uh, so common names of diuretics would be things like hydrochlorothiazide or chlorthalidone. And then other big classes of medications are calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers. What risks would somebody take by not treating their hypertension? What could happen to them if they ignored their problem? So uh, we treat hypertension primarily to avoid damage to many of the vital organs in the body. Um, so the organs most vulnerable to elevated blood pressure are going to be brain, heart, and kidneys. Um, so by treating hypertension, we can reduce the risk for things like strokes, which attack the brains, heart disease, and kidney failure. One final question. How can patients partner with their physician or healthcare provider to ensure that they'll have success in their treatment? We find that um, once the physician has made the decision that you need medication to control your blood pressure, um, making sure that you are in constant communication with the physician about uh, how you respond to the medication. So certainly if there are any problems, so side effects that are undesirable, or if there are other problems with taking the medication, such as interfering with work or life schedules, financial issues, to discuss these with your physician before stopping a medication. Additionally, we find that patients who uh, monitor their blood pressure at home using a home device that are typically available um, in retail pharmacies to monitor your blood pressure outside the doctor's office. Um, in those situations, we're able to more quickly control the blood pressure and again, reduce risk for um, complications of heart disease. Dr. Deloche, thank you very much for joining us today. Your information, I think, is gonna be critical for a lot of our viewers. Thank you for having me, Dr. Vaughn.